Well, it's finally here. Another announcement to Final Fantasy VII Remake that happened a few days ago. And nobody's talking about the problem of it still being an episodic release. No, from what the interference that's being ran by the fanboys from all the comment sections from people who are reporting and regurgitating this info is that they are totally fine with it being episodic and they are even going as far as making up things in their head without confirmation that it's going to be worlds fleshed out it's going to be worlds this it's going to be that it's going to be that and i'm like you know what you really need to wait for information on the game okay and you are forgetting about what Nomura has done to Kingdom Hearts 3 and to Final Fantasy with 15. I don't give a damn if it sold a lot. The thing is, it was dog shit. Kingdom Hearts 3 robbed Kingdom Hearts fans of their enjoyment. But people were obligated to finish that game. And when I say robbed them of enjoyment, the worlds were empty. A lot of characters that should have been in there weren't in there. Um, you have to wait for content that should have been initially in the game like the old games were. But that's neither here or there, huh? Let's talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake. Why are you guys making up things in your head? Why are you guys looking to ignore the history that Square Enix has laid upon you recently with Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy. Why are you ignoring that? Oh, because you're getting the game that you've been hyped of for a long time. And games like this shouldn't take that fucking long. But this is Nomura. This is what he does. But y'all are happy with it. And maybe you would be happy with it or have ground, grounds or a leg to stand on if he made you wait for something worth waiting for. Like I said, the two aforementioned games, Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 15, weren't worth the wait. Now, I say dog shit because in comparison to the old Final Fantasy 15, I mean to the old Final Fantasy games, and I ain't talking about the original 7 either. I'm talking about like 8, 9. Yeah, 8 is the black sheep. And stuff it had that draw system which Final Fantasy 15 has a bastardized and watered down version of so yes we can go even far as comparing it to Final Fantasy 8 all right 9 was good I'm just starting to pick up 9 again that's the one I didn't really get to play as much and so far I, lo I love it you know not all gaming goes online all right anyway the games haven't been great lately, and you guys are ready to just take the plunge. Look what Capcom had to go through. Capcom went through apprehensions, and I had many, with the Resident Evil 2 remake. But you know what? It may have changed the perspective. It may have changed some things, but you know what it never abandoned? The core story or it's core element of gameplay, survival horror, okay? It never abandoned that, and that's why I went on to be a hit much to people's, um, it was unexpected. Capcom, it's a financial driving point of Capcom. And I thought the game would be like, ah, it ain't going to be able to hold a candle in comparison to the original. And it does. And you know what? It's not episodic. I'm not hearing about any DLC I have to pay for, okay? They were just added bonus modes, which came with the original. You had to unlock them. You can unlock them in this one as well, and you can unlock weapons in this game unless you want to pay for everything. Now, that right there is a problem, but Capcom like, you know what? Here, whatever. Here, buy these weapons. But you know what? You can't buy unlimited health. Good luck getting through the goddamn game. And that's what happens with people. Resident Evil 2 Remake isn't a walk in the park. But it's not extremely difficult. But it's not a walk in the park. But 
back on subject, it's not episodic. There's no excuse why a game should be episodic, let alone it is not like it has a complicated, complex turn um turn based system, but it looks like it still does have the active um turn base in it that the old ones got, but it's gonna be coming across a different way. My thing is hold on, lower your expectations, and get wild when you got concrete gameplay info. We've been here before with these trailers. We've been here before. We've seen all these nice looking trailers. We've seen that with little elements of gameplay, but I'm seeing guys look like they're about to fucking jizz in their drawers, like they're about to faint, like they're about to pass out, look like they're about to just start um, ripping their shirts off and start playing with their nipples in reaction to a one-minute teaser trailer. That really doesn't show us much different. It looks better than it was before. Cloud looks bigger and stronger. Um, Arif has a better-looking face. You got American voice acting in the American trailer, and in Japan, you got a Japanese voice trailer, so it looks like they put some detail into that. But we know nothing about the core gameplay mechanics. And add the fact that it's episodic. So, how much are they going to charge you for this initial release? Are they going to charge you $60? And then episodes is going to be, what, $30 each? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm just making an assumption here. I don't know for sure. This is why we should be concerned about it being episodic. Because it might not be sustainable to be something like, you know what? This game is worth the money. No, they what they're going to add stuff in there after you make an, enough complaints? No, make a complete game from the start. All right? Let's be honest. They've been working on this shit since the PS3 days. When they did that tech demo, what you think this was now? This is just a more enhanced version of that tech demo that they did for PS3. So this game has been in development longer than it should have. And they didn't scrap the stuff like they said they did. They didn't scrap the old gameplay from Connect. They didn't. They didn't scrap it. So what is the fucking excuse? Why? Can't there be a full game? And why are a lot of you fans making an excuse for Square Enix and Nomura to nickel and dime you, to bullshit you? Because you know what they're doing? You are letting them play on your anticipation, play on your nostalgia, and you're not thinking with a level head. Hey, I might be getting taken to the cleaners here, okay? Oh, hey. I put all my mental investment into Final Fantasy XV and I ended up feeling empty. But I was obliged to play it because I spent all my money and I done put all these hours into it and now and I can't return it. So my, I might as well just finish it. That's, I, can, I know a lot of people who've done that, finished Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy XV out of obligation. One of my good friends told me he has done that. Me, I was like, you know what? I got the game for free when I did the bots who get one free. And I was like, thank God, because if I spent the full $60 on this game and put it on the shelf as quick as I did, I've been highly pissed off. But I digress. So as usual, it's Kazama Fury. Let me know how you feel in the comment section about this. Because I'm not telling you not to be happy about this game. I'm telling you to stole your expectations because of the past two games. And it's smart to do. People have stole their expectations with Resident Evil 2 Remake. And they were very and these were fans who were very passionate and loved Final Fantasy. I mean Resident Evil 2 in 1998. Who fell in love with that. These people were really did not want to see, they weren't trying to hear the noise. But they got one over. Yeah, there were new fans in there. And a lot of these new fans, you could tell these days now. See, I thought I was going to be finished, but I'm not. Um, there's a lot of these new fans today that are showing their true selves. Look at Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Look at that. 
why are people complaining about the difficulty levels? This goes to show that people don't know shit about From Software and how they do their Souls games and how they do their um, they third person action adventure games. This is how they do this. But no, they want the game to be easier. And these are the same people complaining. This is why this is relevant because to my conversation is because Resident Evil 2 got the same complaints about its difficulty level. That shit made me more scared. And then you that's a game where, oh, if I just run through it, I can get through it quick as hell. Yeah, it's one of those games. But to the regular gamer, the regular gamer has to learn patterns, learn strategies, learn how these zombies operate, learn how they can get through them. And then you'll start seeing them get all the why you think where you think speed running running comes from? Speed running came from people learning how to get good in the game. Nobody wants to get good in the game no more. Some people don't got time. I understand that. Like there's a lot of games I'm backlogged on that I could wish I could just sit down and master. But I'm not gonna sit here and try to tell gaming developers to make games easier. Because I know and I respect and I sympathize and I understand I used to be the gamer that a lot of these people still are. Me, I, I'm just pressed for time these day and age. But there's a lot of people who do nothing but game and got nothing but time for it. When you work two jobs, you don't have that time. So I can understand. I got other things in my life and I'm getting older. So I'm still passionate about gaming, but I'm not passionate about having eight hour marathons of a game or sitting there. OK, and these are the p people who don't have time, but yet they don't understand gaming all that together. They don't respect other people or the majorities feel on how the time you put into gaming to get good. They don't respect that. They just want the game they want. And they want it to be played. I'm like, look, if you want an easy game that rewards you for fucking up, get a Nintendo Switch, play Super Mario Odyssey. And that's a game I like. But you only lose 10 coins when you die. There's no definite lives lost in that game anymore. Like, But you can always, once you start back up at a save point, all you have to do is collect more because the, the coins respawn. And once you collect more, you fuck up again and die, you start over again. And the cycle keeps re on repeating. If you want a game like that, Super Mario Odyssey is the game for you. Me, I enjoy it because it's Mario. It's fun. It's a fun game. I really like it. But I'm going to keep it real here. That's a game that rewards you and doesn't want to see you die. Resident Evil is not that game. That's why Safe States, Final Fantasy is not that game. Get good. Save at the save point. Get your ass handed to you by whoever you go up against. Restart from the save point. Take an alternate path. Grind. Get good. A lot of people don't want to do that no more. They don't. And it ain't because they press for time. It's because they are selfish and entitled gamers. They are selfish and entitled gamers. And they want the game to be the way they want or case in point with the final fantasy 7 remake they want the game so bad they don't even give a damn about being nickeled and dimed but i digress so for real this time because i'm a fury i'm here and now i'm out peace is this nigga fucking serious bro Oh my god. They're looking real good right now. Why is, why is this nigga crying? Cloud's looking very good right now. He's looking really good right now. You gotta be fucking kidding me. And he's sounding pretty good too. But he sounds pretty. He, he sounds really different though. Look at the. Oh my. Oh, Cross Slash! The animations. Oh, Severov! Oh, dear Severov! Why, 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 
doing it with his and voice. And even he sounded real. Like, do they have new voice actors? 